Welcome to Microbiology for the Boards. Today we shall be discussing the basic structure of the bacterial cell wall. Now, what are the components that you need to know for the board exam? There's about 10 parts of the bacteria that is very important that determine whether and how a bacteria functions. Well, first of all, we have two kinds of bacterial cell wall. We have a gram-positive cell wall, and we have a gram-negative cell wall. So, gram-positives are different from gram-negatives, and we shall talk about the distinguishing characteristics in this lecture. So, a gram-positive bacteria has a phospholipid membrane, which is a, accompanied by a thick cell wall. So, let's take a look at the structure. On the left side of the board, this is the cytoplasm of the bacteria, and this is the cell membrane that covers the cytoplasm. As you can see, the cell membrane has a thick, huge layer of peptidoglycan that sits right on top of it. Now, also at the Ex external part of the bacteria, you see a capsule, and we shall talk about that in a moment. We also have a lipotechoic acid, which contains lipids and tachoic acids, which is embedded inside the cell wall of a gram-positive bacteria. There's also a pilus, and bacteria do have flagella. Compare that to a gram-negative bacterial cell wall, that also has a cytoplasm, okay, this is the cytoplasm, and they have another cell membrane, just like a gram-positive, and that after the cell membrane, there is a periplasm, and we have a small layer of peptidoglycan. See the, the thickness of the peptidoglycan here? compared to this amount of peptidoglycan in gram-positive bacteria. That is a big difference between these two classes of bacteria. So we have the peptidoglycan, and right on top, they also have an outer membrane. That's what makes gram-negatives also special. They have this outer membrane that contains LPS, which is a lipopolysaccharide, and, or an endotoxin, and then they finally have a capsule that surrounds them and they can have a pillus, and they can also have a flagella. But the key difference between a gram-positive and a gram-negative wall is the thick peptidoglycan cell wall in the gram-positive and the thinner peptidoglycan cell wall in the gram-negative bacteria. So what are the functions of all of these comp component parts of the bacteria? Well, let's start with the first one, peptidoglycan. Well, what's peptidoglycan? Peptido means peptides and glycan, amino acid and glucose, right? So in order to take an amino acid and a, and a peptide together, you need the enzyme transpeptidase, right? Trans means across. Transpeptidase, that's what takes and forms that thick peptidoglycan cell wall, both in gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, okay? Nice cross links and form a nice thick cell wall. So that's the, that's the function of peptidoglycan. Now, it's a very protective layer, as you can see. It's very difficult to get through this layer, and that's kind of protective for the bacteria. Now, the next component we need to know is lipotechoic acid. Now, lipotechoic acid is only found in gram-positive bacteria, but what it does is it provides cell wall rigidity, okay? It keeps these cell walls nice and rigid, especially in gram-positive bacteria, but also it induces the production of interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis alpha. Wait a minute, what's that? That's new. Yeah, that's true. Now, what is interleukin 1? Well, interleukin 1, its function is it causes endogenous pyrogen. What does that mean? Endogenous inside my body. 
Pyro means fever. That means it's a fever inducer. So when patients develop fever, when they have a bacterial infection, interleukin-1 is being released. The way that's released is because of this lipotechoic acid on the surface of bacteria that causes the body to release this interleukin-1s. That's what makes the patient have a fever. So if your patient has a pneumonia, for example, right, and they have streptococcal pneumonia inside their lungs, right, and then bacteria is being destroyed by the uh, leukocytes, you first develop a fever, okay? That's the body's way of knowing we've got an underlying infection. Well, it also causes acute inflammation, and I'm gonna explain that in a minute, but before we see that, it activates the endothelium causing expression of adhesion molecules, okay? That's another function of interleukin-1, and it's also a chemokine secretion to recruit leukocytes. You know how I think of interleukin-1? Here, here, here you go. You got fever, right? It tells you the body's got fever, okay? So that's one signal. Number two, it's, it's like a perfume that recruits leukocytes. Is that good or bad? Well, that's really good because if we have interleukin-1, the leukocytes can now use it as a GPS navigator. They're going to be like, wow, we smell an invader. Let's say you have a streptococcal pneumonia infection in a patient. They run to the spots, right? And then they destroy the bacteria, okay? So, but the reason is because of this lipotechoic acid, which contains a lipid and a tachoic acid on top of it, okay? So that's, that's one of the function. Also, there is the periplasm. What is the periplasm? Well, let's go to which bacteria has a periplasm. The gram negative. The gram positive also has a periplasmic space, but the periplasmic space is more obvious in a gram negative bacteria because they have this inner cell membrane, which is a phospholipid bilayer, and there's a space between that and the peptidoglycan cell layer. So that space is known as the periplasmic space, okay? All right, now what's located in the periplasmic space? That is where beta lactamases are found. Beta lactamases, beta lactams. What are beta lactams? Well, that's antibiotics, right? Penicillin, amoxicillin, dichloxacillin, right? So those are antibiotics in the penicillin family that can help destroy the bacteria peptidoglycan cell membrane. So this is a branch of pharmacology integrated now, so let's check it out. We've invented penicillin, right? We have other, you know, amoxicillin, you know, ampicillin, we have dichloxacillin, nafcicillin, these are all penicillins or cephalosporins, and the way they work is by inhibiting the transpeptidase enzyme, preventing the formation of peptidoglycan cell wall in the bacteria. So, but, Bacteria are smart. They don't want you to destroy their cell walls, right? Because they want to live. They want to have a good time and cause an infection. But they have beta lactamases. Anything with an ACE in biochemistry or in medicine is an enzyme. So they cleave off the beta lactam chain of penicillin, making the drug inactive. So it's I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. There are over 300 hours of medical video lectures on my website. I want you to visit www.ftplectures.com to watch similar video lectures like this, and you'll be amazed about how your medical knowledge is going to shoot through the roof. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the like button on my video. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.